Howdy, A Paprika. It's Miss Kosh. This is um, the released FRQ um, from the very first ever A Paprika test. So I printed this out. I have worked them, um, but it's been several days, and so I've slept since then. Uh, we'll see how far I get through. I, I hope, hopefully, since they're released questions, it's not a problem that I'm working through them. Um, I thought overall that the test. Um, Okay, I have no idea what happened on the multiple choice, but I think that the free response um, was what we expected, um, if not almost a little easier than we expected. Like this part in particular, they're telling you that these three points are, um, are on the graph and then they ask you using that information. Um, okay, thank you, that's great. Uh, okay, so let's jump in. We'll see how far I get in this video. Um, I am not going to fill out um, a fancy little answer document and I may not write every, down everything um, and I have no idea exactly how AP wants to grade it. I'm just gonna work it like I'm a student taking the test. Um, but not perfectly because I was too lazy to print out an answer document. So you're fine. Okay, um, so with this one they're telling us H is defined as F of G, uh, G of F of X, or so G of F of X. So they want H of three. So H of three is going to be equal to g of f of three well okay so what's f this graph is f here's three and they tell me that three has well and they also tell me right here that um it's the point f so basically this is telling me that f of three is equal to one okay so now this will be g of one well what is g g is this equation so if i plug in one that basically just means this number times 0.7 um so I could do that. I could say 2.916 times 0.7, and here's my answer. Um, so I, I do, I would, might say h of 3 is equal to 2.0412. Um, I have taught much longer in the AP world than there has been an AP, I lied. I have taught much longer in the IB world, the International Baccalaureate world, than um, I've been teaching that for a long time, um, and I'm just now into the AP world because AP pre-cal wasn't a thing until just now. Um, and so in IB, they want exact or three sig figs. So I would, I like this exact value, and I would just be done. I know that AP wants three decimal places, um, but my colleague who has done a whole lot of grading says do four anyway, and this is equivalent. So um, I personally would say, okay, if you wanted to tell me, if you were rounding it, then use that approximate, um, then it would be a point like that, but okay, we're, I digress. Uh, okay, so find all values for x for which f of x equals 1 or indicate that there are no such values. Well, here is, so basically they're, they're saying when the y value equals 1, what are your x values? Well, so here's that line, and they were here, here, and here, which they actually told you in the directions. So um, what is that going to be? X is going to equal negative 3, 0, and positive 3. And this, uh, this point alone, it tells you whether, the, no, it does not have an inverse function. Determine if it has an if f has an inverse function. It has an inverse, but the inverse is not a function. So I would say no. Give a reason. Well, um, I would say something about we have the the same the output value of one, for example, has three different input values: negative three, zero, and positive three. So write down something like that. They definitely don't. They want more than just it failed a horizontal line test. Um, so the output values in f or the output value in f of whatever had more than one input value, which means that when you take the inverse, the, in, the input value would have more than one output value. Hopefully that helped. Um, okay, so I skipped B. Find all values of x as a decimal approximation for which g of x equals 2, or indicate that there are no such values. Okay, so what I would do here is I would go to my graph, and I would type in, what was it, 2.916... Um, I hit, I was overly enthusiastic, delete, right, okay, times 0.7 to the x, and I want to know when does that equal 2, so I'm going to draw those graphs, and I'm going to do g solve and find that, that intersection, and there it is, okay, so what will I write down? I will say x is approximately equal to, hopefully I can read this, 1.0572. And I'll get in the habit of using four decimal places. Uh, determine the end behavior. Okay, so this, I know this equation 
is um, it's an exponential function and it's it's um, got a decay. So, or it, it, it's, it's not, it's a growth or decay factor, it's a decay factor because it's less than one. So my graph ultimately is gonna look something like this, okay? And it wasn't shifted up. So what's it doing? It's decaying and getting closer and closer to the asymptote of y equals zero. So now let's use limit notation, which is the limit as x goes to, what did they say? Increases without bounds. So it's going to positive infinity of what? of uh, determine the behavior of g of g of x what does it equal it equals zero it equals that asymptote that is approaching okay so that was the first one well we'll keep going here comes the next one okay so what would i do for this problem uh, it printed funny i guess okay so t equals zero there were forty thousand units um so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to ignore the thousands um i think did they tell us that G is the number of units sold in thousands, G of T, um, on T days. So, so G of T, they just want, so basically G of zero is gonna be equal to 40, is how I think we should interpret that. I am not currently grading this exam, so we'll see uh, when they release their stuff. But um, Okay, so this is equal to A plus um, B times the natural log of zero plus one, is because I was using this equation. Um, and so natural log of 1 is equal to 0. So b times 0. So this is just giving us the equation um, a equals 40. Okay. The next equation, so use, so write two equations. So here's the first one. Um, and then the second one, well, what do we know? We know that g of 91 is equal to, well, 76. So this is a plus b times the natural log of 91 plus 1 is 92. Um, and this is going to be equal to 76. So I like this equation in particular. And there are your two equations. Okay, so what would we do next to find the decimal values? So um, if you have the Casio, one way to do this problem would be to come down to equation and you're doing the simultaneous. You have two unknowns. And so our A value was one, our B value was zero, and it was equal to 40, which is kind of lame, to be honest with you. Um, here, our A value is one, our B value is the natural log of 92, and our um, C value, or it equals 76. Okay, so we knew that A was equal to 40, and now it's giving us, this is, that Y is actually the B value. Um, so A equals 40, B is approximately, 7.9615. Okay, um, if you would rather do it by hand, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so we knew that A was 40 plus B times the natural log of 92 equals 76. What do I do? I subtract 40. B natural log of 92 is equal to 36. B is going to be equal to 36 divided by the natural log of 92. That better match. Let's see if it does. If it doesn't, I'm going to question everything I know to be true, good and holy. <laughs> um, or I made a mistake. If I made a mistake, see if you can catch it before I do. Um, and that looks really familiar, doesn't it? 7.9615. Yep. Okay. Okay. So then we have to find the average rate of change. To be honest with you, this is like my least favorite part, this section in here. Um, but I'm getting better at it. But it's my least favorite part of all the FRQ. So file that away for whatever reason. Okay, so then they want the average rate of change. So the way that I like to do this, um, average rate of change, what are we doing is we're finding um, uh, g of 91 minus g of zero divided by 91 minus zero. What do we know? We know that g of 91 was equal to 76. We know g of zero was equal to 40. This is over 91 minus zero. Okay. Let's see if we can make that, we'll do 76 minus 40 over 91. Okay, so this is, oh, that was easy. Um, but we can go ahead and get the approximation, but I'm gonna keep this exact value for the next part because um, uh, five, six, okay, there we go. Um, the way, now I need to, I need to follow some what the other teachers are keep posting. It says, use the average rate of change to estimate the number of units of video games sold in thousands on day 50. Show the work that leads to the answer. Um, so what I see with some people, let me see if I, let me see if I do this correctly for you. The way I've been solving these is I say, okay, well, we know that the average rate of change is equal to 
we're now going to do g of 50 minus g of 0. I could also use 91, but I think that the 50 is easier. 50 and 0. 0 is easier to work with than 91, but it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, and so then I plug in, I plug in what I know. I know this value, I know this value, and I'm solving for that value. That's how I've been doing it, but, um, and let's, okay, let's see what happens. So this is the average rate of change was this 36 over 91 is equal to G of 50, which I don't know, minus G of zero, G of zero is 40 over 50. Okay, so I'm gonna multiply um, 36 over 91, it gets multiplied by 50. Um, and then I'm going to add 40 to that because I'm getting rid of this. And then, okay, so what I just found, I'm, I'm, I found that G of 50 is equal to this, which is approximately equal to um, 59.7802. Okay, but what I think they do, let me see if I can think through this. This graph, it's, it's a log function and it's, um, it's doing something, oh, it's been shifted to the, um, to the left one, right? Because, wait, hang on, what's this equation? G of t would be about equal to um, 40 plus, what was it? 7.9615 natural log of, I did not save myself enough space, t plus one. Ah, can you read that? I'm sorry. Um, what does that do? That takes my graph and it moves it to the left one. So I can plug in zero, but I can't. I, but, so I have an asymptote here at t equals negative one. Um, at zero, where was I? When I plugged in one, I was at 40. So I'm like way up here doing something like this. But basically, it's this log function that's kind of growing, but growing slowly. Okay, it's concave down, which is going to be important. Um, but it's, it's increasing and concave down. Um, so they're saying find the average rate of change from zero to um, this would be the point. So here's this is the point zero comma forty, and this is the point ninety one comma seventy six. Yes, I think that's right. Okay, so then we're saying okay, here's this line that's going to go through those points. Y'all, I've gotten so much better at, at understanding this slash hopefully teaching this. Um, and we want to use that to figure out, okay, where, well, this point on the line, what would that be? Um, we want to use it to estimate the, the curve. Well, because it's between these two points, it's going to be an underestimate. It's going to be below that actual value because um, this is concave down. So when we're between the two points that we're writing this equation for, um, we're going to be below the curve. Now, when we go beyond 91 or smaller than zero, well, we can only go, we can't go smaller than the negative one. We can't even equal negative one because of the domain restrictions. But we would be over here, if we're bigger than 91, our, our graph, our curve is now um, below the secant line that's going there. So our estimate would, would be an overestimate bigger than 91. Okay, and I'm kind of answering the next question too. Um, okay, so hang on, how do they do this? They would say, um, let me see if I, I've, I've been seeing these equations and I'm like, what are they doing? But what I think they're doing is I think they're doing y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, and so, which we know, um, how do they do this? The y value is, so it's y minus, ultimately, what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find the y value of g of 50 equals, now my m is my um, average rate of change, it's that slope, times x minus the x value that I would use there is 50. This is not what they do, what I've seen people do, but okay. Now if I use, I can use, I have too many variables, but I have another point here. So if I say, okay, this is 40 minus g of 50 is equal to 3 over 91 times the x value was 0 minus 50. Is this how they did it? Well, we're about to find out. Okay. Um, this obviously did not come as naturally to me, which is why I didn't really do it this way. So I have um, 36 over 91 is getting multiplied by negative 50. Okay, then I'm going to subtract away the 40 
and then I'm gonna divide by a negative one. Okay, so they make this positive, and this is exactly what I had seen before. So I think that's roughly what they're doing, is they're making a, writing the equation of the secant line and then plugging in this stuff. But um, this is more natural to me, and I think I keep getting the right answer, so that's good. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see, did I answer the questions that they asked? Um, Use the average rate of change to find the estimate, estimated number. Okay, so what was it approximately? Um, about about 60,000, uh, whatever, units of, uh, I forget what it, anyway, something like that. Um, okay, let A T represent an estimate of the number of units of the video game sold using. Um, it can be shown that our estimate is less than the actual value. Okay, so notice that's because here our estimate between these two points, because this is concave down, the estimate, the line that helps us find the estimate is below the actual curve. Okay, explain why it works out the other way, because it's concave down, um, and then the, the estimate will now be above. Oh, no, 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 okay, it's staying between 0 and 91. So it's concave down. You might, it might not hurt to sketch a graph. I wrote this up um, when I made an answer key. I forget how I said it, but anyway, that's the basic idea. So write it up nicer. Could put everything, make it nice and concise and say what I said. The makers of the video game reported that the daily sales of the video game decreased each day after no. Um, so um, the error in the model increases. Oh, well, because what's happening, this is concave down and this, gra this line keeps going and going, and that, that difference between them is gonna get smaller and smaller. So the amount of sell keeps, the, the amount of video games that they're selling is increasing now, it's in, it's, but it's increasing at a decreasing rate. So they're, the, they're never gonna, the amount they sell never decreases. The makers of the video game reported that the daily sales of the video game decreased each day after that. Explain why the error model increases. Um, Yeah, I, I'm not quite sure what they mean, but basically the number of sales doesn't decrease, but the rate at which they're increasing their sales is decreasing. So the average rate of change is decreasing because it's concave down, uh, something like that. I think I wrote it up um, in my other, um, I'll, maybe I'll put a link to how I worked this out already. Um, maybe, I may, maybe I will and maybe I won't. Okay, that's a rather long video. Come back for three and or four. And um, I'll see you on the flip side. So like, subscribe, comment, um, tell your friends, and all the things. All right. Goodbye.